All right, I am two classes. Today, we are talking about chords, using chords. That's a, you pronounce that word, chord, not chord. Um, English language is kind of funny, like, why not just use it, just a C or a K? Why do you got to use a CH, but pronounce it like it's a C or a K? Whatever, it's chord. Um, we've talked about chords before. Uh, a chord is a length that goes from one at part of the circle to the edge. It goes to, from the edge of the circle to the edge, all right? Uh, if that chord goes through the center of a circle, it is a diameter, right? So diameters are chords. Uh, it's just a chord that goes to the center, but it goes part way through. Uh, we talked about arcs last lesson, so you can see uh, a diameter will split, uh, will split circles into two semicircles. A chord will split it into a minor arc and a major arc. Um, so uh, our first theorem with chords, this is actually a pretty simple one. Uh, if our chords are congruent, so we have um, our, our arcs. If the arcs are congruent, then the chords are congruent and vice versa. So if the arcs here, arc AB is congruent to CD, then the chords that are making them are congruent. And then vice versa, if the chords are congruent here, then the arcs are congruent. Real simple, you just gotta look out for that stuff. It should make sense in your brain. Uh, if you look at this stuff, it, it's gonna look congruent. So makes sense. Let's look at an example here. So we have di in the diagram, we have circle P congruent to circle Q. I guess that needs to be said that the circles need to be congruent for this also to be true. But anyway, uh, FG is, or segment FG is congruent to segment JK. So we have FG is the chord on P and JK is the chord on Q. They are congruent. And then it gives us the measure of arc JK. So this is mark, measure of arc JK is 80 degrees. What about FG? That should be pretty easy to figure out. Um, measure of that of F, arc FG is also there it is. It's also going to be 80 degrees since all this stuff is congruent. Um, let's move on. That should, that's pretty simple. Uh, perpendicular bisector of chords. So if you have a chord that is bisected, so we have this chord here, FG, it's being, I shouldn't say it's bisected, it's being cut, it's intersected by EG. If this intersection creates a 90 degree angle, if the chord is perpendicular to the uh, to the diameter, then that chord is cut in half. So what that means is this part, FH is gonna be congruent to HD. And then the arcs are also gonna be congruent. Uh, arc FG is gonna be congruent to arc GD. All right, so again, this is stuff you can, you can look at it to figure it out. Um, Let's look at an example here. So uh, we have uh, this, we have it marked off that it's perpendicular. So this diameter is perpendicular to chord. So that means uh, the chord is cut in half. So we need to find HK. We know the distance from N to K. Um, so the distance from H to N is also gonna be seven. These parts are congruent. So the whole thing, HK wants us to find, so HK is the whole distance across here. All right, so we just add those together. Seven plus seven is 14. Not what I wanted. So the distance the from H to K is 14. All right, find uh, the measure of HK. So we want to find uh, the whole thing here. Do, 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 do. I will use green. So of the whole, arc, we need to find um, the measure of that. So we have the two parts here. Uh, what we know about this is that uh, since those chords are congruent in that last theorem we did, did these arcs are congruent. So I'm going to set up an equation that's going to let me solve for x there. So the equation, uh, since these are congruent, that means 11x is equal to 70 plus x. So 
So the parts are congruent. All right, so from here, I just need to solve. Uh, so uh, first step to solving is I'm going to get the x's on the same side. So I'm going to eliminate the x from this side. So I subtract it. Uh, plus x minus x cancels out. 11 minus x is 10x is equal to 70. Last step to solving there is divide both sides by 10. So times 10 divided by 10 cancels out. You get x is equal to 7. Uh, we're not done yet, though, right? Because we want to find the measure of hk. Uh, to do that, I'm going to take the 7 and put it in here. So from h to j is 11 times x. I know x is uh, 7. So 11 times 7 is 77. So the distance, write this out, hj is 77. Since these are congruent, that also means that this part is 77. So if I add them together, so the measure of hk or kh, I, kk, hk is equal to h to j is 77 plus j to k is also 77. So that means that is 154 is the measure of arc HK. So that is the final answer that we are looking for. On that. So just make sure you read it carefully. Uh, say um, how to solve, you're gonna have to set up an equation. If it's asking for the measure, you're gonna have to substitute the X back into one of the parts here, one or both. All right. Um, yeah, so let's, uh, in exercise three and four, find the indicated length. Uh, so CE, let's do another one of these. Um, CE, uh, again, what we know because the, uh, because our chord is perpendicular to a diameter, that means it is cut in half, it is bisected, so those parts are equal. So uh, the other half, uh, F to E is five, so C to E is 10. So 5 plus 5 is 10. All right. Find C E. Again, we know that the sides there, uh, the arcs, this 9x is congruent to the 80 uh, minus x. So I'm going to set up an equation to find x. Uh, since the arcs are equal, those are going to be equal. So 9x is equal to 80 minus x. Solve this real quick. Uh, first thing I'm going to do, nope, I wanted. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is add x to both sides. Uh, so I get uh, 10x is equal to 80. And then divide both sides by 10. These cancel out uh, 10 times 10 divided by 10 cancel out. You get X is equal to eight. So not done yet. I need to put it into one of these sides. So I'm going to do, uh, so CD is equal to nine X. So I'm going to take this eight that I just found and it's going to get substituted into the X. So it's nine times eight is 72. Uh, since these are equal, so since this is 72, uh, that means this is also 72. So the whole distance that I'm looking for, the distance from C to E, arc C to E, these are arcs I'm looking for. You knew what I'm talking about, though. Arc C E is just going to be the 72 plus 72. And that comes out to 144. So measure of, great, measure of arc CE is 144. I'll do it for that. Do we have anything else? Oh, we do have more stuff. Great. Uh, in the semicircle or congruent circles, uh, two chords are congruent if and only if they are equidistant from the center. So what this is saying, uh, if you have two congruent uh, chords, then the distance here, um, the distance from the center, this is going to be congruent to this, right? And then vice versa, if the distance from the center 
uh, is congruent, then these parts are all going to be congruent. All right. Um, so let's look at how this works. So, gee, that's kind of a awful diagram, but okay, we'll work with it. Um, in diagram, QR is equal to ST is equal to 16. So let's find QR. QR. So this whole thing here, Q to R is equal to S to T, and these are all 16. So 16, it, it, the whole thing is 16. Same thing down here. This whole thing is 16. Uh, CU is 2X, CV is 5X minus nine. Find the radius of uh, circle C. Okay, so uh, this is gonna take some doing. So these parts are congruent. So 2X, is equal to 5x minus 9. So that's this part in here. Um, <clears throat> so uh, to solve for this, I'm going to get the x's on the same side. So I'm going to subtract 5x from both sides. So this cancels out. So you get negative 3x is equal to negative 9. Then I'm going to divide by negative 3. Sorry, I'm not color coding, the doing it in a different color. It's working through. So x is equal to positive 3. Negative 9 divided by 3. Negative 3 is positive 3. So what that means, if I put that into the 2x here, so 2, that's going to be 2 times 3 is 6. All right, so this part is 6 here. All right, so that means it has a distance of 6. So I'm going to, I need to, whew, all right, let's clean some of this up. So we have what we need. Um, clean some stuff up. Um, so to find the radius, I'm going to go from C to R here. And so I'm making a right triangle here. So I just found that this, 2 times 6, this part is 6. All right. Um, since the whole distance uh, from Q to R is 16, half of this, if I go from U, U to R, that's going to be 8. All right. So here's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm working with the right triangle here. I'm going to highlight what it is and then uh, redraw it. So I'm going to take, let me get a different color here. Man, okay. There we go. Okay. So I'm working with this triangle here. So let me redraw that right triangle so it's out of the mess of that diagram. So it's here. All right. So this is C, U, R. We just found from C to U is 6, all right? And because Q to R is 16, that means U to R is going to be half that is 8. And so from here, to find the radius, we're going to use Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. So I'm trying to find this distance here. Um, if I label the side lengths A, B, and C, uh, the longest side has to be C. This is going to be my A and B. Doesn't matter. Those are interchangeable. Uh, but let's go ahead and put those in. So A is 6 plus 8 is equal to X squared. And solve. So 6 squared is 36 plus 64 is equal to X squared. 36 plus 64 is 100 is equal to X squared. And then I'm going to square root both sides. Um, and so I get 10 equal to x. So sorry that's a mess. It was 
uh, hard to get into the the whole thing there. But yeah, so the distance here from C to R is 10, and that is a radius. So we found it. So again, to do that, use the fact that these things are congruent. 2x is equal to 5x minus 9. Solve for x. Put that x back into here, into the 2x. So you, uh, I'll write that out. Uc is equal to 2x. And I know x is found it to be 3. So Uc is 6. So just uh, it's all in there. And then once you have that, you can use the fact, uh, you know, all these parts, you can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the rest. Um, that'll do it for us today. Uh, more circles next time. Good times.